Hello, I'm violinist James Ennis, and I'm here to answer some questions from music students from my hometown of Brandon, Manitoba. I'm going to be performing with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra May 16 and 17. I hope you'll make it, and I hope to see you there. Can you recommend practice techniques for ensuring that one's quality in the practice room can be maintained on stage while performing? Thank you. So this is an excellent question uh, that doesn't have an easy answer, but I think the most important thing to remember is we need to practice performing. Uh, the practice room and the stage are very different environments. And of course, on stage, we have this heightened sense of concentration. Now, unfortunately, I think often when people practice, uh, we have this idea that we want to get to a point of being uh, bulletproof. Uh, people say, oh, you know, I want to be at a point where I could be woken up, knocked out of bed at two in the morning and be able to play it. And it's like, well, that's fine, but not necessarily useful because you're not going to be feeling that way on stage. You're going to be thinking about everything you're doing. You're going to have this heightened sense of awareness. And I think that if we can try to practice that way, to challenge ourselves to be in that enhanced, concentrated frame of mind, that is ultimately a much more beneficial way of practicing. So uh, play for friends, play for your teacher, of course. Uh, record yourself. Challenge yourself, too, if there's a difficult passage or a difficult page or a difficult movement to just turn on your phone record yourself playing it as well as you can so you're not stopping when something goes a little wrong you know get into the uh, frame of mind of, of performing even if there's no one there to hear it my name is Sinel and I've been studying violin at the Brandon Ecker Gramate Conservatory of Music and I've also been studying music in the Suzuki violin program and my teacher is Marla Winters and my question is, do you experience high levels of stress before performing? And if so, how do you manage to cope with your stress to prevent it from inhibiting your musical and technical abilities? Another excellent question. Um, I, think that, I think that all performers experience uh, that kind of pre-performance stress, um, which sometimes I think is much more linked to other things in life. You know, I think that if our mind is cluttered with all sorts of other challenges that can definitely make performing more difficult you know if, if possible to try to get to a point of not worrying about anything else in your life except for what you're about to do that is very helpful i think this is a, a bit of an obvious one but i think that if you're well rested and well fed <laughs> i think you will be in a better state of mind for it we also need to remember that what we're doing is ultimately there to to make people happy you know the people in the audience by coming to the concert they've already bought into the idea of this being a good experience for them everyone is on your side everybody wants it to be a good experience everybody wants you to do your best so i think that that's helpful to remember that everyone is here uh everyone is here rooting for you and then of course it's uh you know the the very simple fact that if you've worked as hard as you can and you've prepared as well as you can then there's nothing more you can do and if you haven't and you really aren't ready and you haven't practiced enough then maybe you should be stressed <laughs> uh, hello my name is eugene berg and i am a i just finished my third year of uh, music performance studies on the violin in brandon university uh, currently i study with carrie dewars uh, she's my main professor and uh, a fun fact about me is that uh, one of my passions is uh, films and video games. So uh, the first question, do you have a technique routine that you do regardless of the repertoire that you're preparing? Uh, scales, etudes, exercises, fitness routines, warm-ups, uh, stretches, etc.? Now. I personally don't really, but I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing for people to have. But to be honest, my practice routine these days is very much dependent upon the repertoire that I need to be performing. And I try to rotate enough repertoire uh, and enough different types of things, you know, concertos, solo violin work, chamber music, recital repertoire with piano, uh, that it is, in essence, that repertoire is exercising the different sides of my 
technique and the, the different sides of my sort of musicianship too, I suppose. Uh, I think it is important uh, to make sure that you're limber, that you're warm, that you're stretched out. I think that uh, as one gets older, you know what your body needs in that sense. Um, I certainly encourage people to listen to those signals as closely as possible, uh, to be very aware, you know, that it's, it's an interesting and it's a peculiar thing we do as, uh, as string players in particular in terms of the physical exertion and uh, we do need to be careful not to hurt ourselves. Can you talk about a particularly challenging performance or recording project that you've worked on and how you overcame any difficulties that you encountered with it? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, <laughs> the idea of challenging um, this is going to be a bit of a non-answer, but to be honest, any project that you undertake is, is as challenging as you want to make it uh, in terms of where you set your bar on how well it's going to be accomplished. So I think that really the key is to turn every everything you do into a challenge to be the absolute best that it can be. And um, that also, it's an interesting way of, of in approaching these things because I think it, it leads to challenges that are very, uh, that are extremely varied, uh, that have a great deal of variety, um, whether it's you know, particular technical challenges or whether it's dealing with a piece of music that might seem quite musically foreign at first and kind of absorbing that language and understanding how to pass along that story. So I think there's uh, different answers for every single different musical encounter. As a performer, how do you balance technical precision with emotional expression? And what role do you believe each plays in creating a compelling performance? Well, I think that uh, you can't have one without the other. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I think it's sort of a, a fallacy that sometimes the way people are like, well, you know, they don't have a particularly solid technique, but they're very musical. And it's like, well, how can you tell? Because if they're not really playing the piece the way it's supposed to be, then how is that how is that musical? And then you know, people saying, well, they're not very musical, but they have a good technique. It's like, well, what does that even mean? Because what makes it hard to play is is I mean, sure, there are things that are kind of hard to do in some sort of absolute way but it it what makes it hard is communicating music and telling that story when the going gets rough so to speak from a technical standpoint so i think that the balance is is really all about figuring out what it is you want to communicate and how you think that music speaks best and and when you start thinking of it in those terms i think that technical and musical challenges meld into the same thing to be honest um, you know sometimes the most sometimes the the real linchpin of a musical phrase will be a single note that you can sight read but playing it just the way you want to is technically the most difficult thing in the piece so do you experience burnout uh, how do you manage to keep repetition of the repertoire fresh through the seasons performances and the years? Thankfully, uh, I don't get burned out too often. Sometimes, yeah, I start to feel it coming on, but, but I like performing and I feel very grateful that I'm able to do so. And I have always enjoyed rotating a lot of repertoire. Uh, that's just a personal decision. Some people, some of my colleagues and friends, they particularly enjoy settling into a particular world. Uh, they might say, you know, I'm going to play Brahms Concerto and Mozart three for the next four, four months, and that's the world I want to live in, and that's great. For me, I think I might get a little bit burned out, no matter how much I love the repertoire, if I weren't kind of uh, turning it over every so often, every week or two. Um, so that that sort of keeps me fresh, and frankly, it also the more the more repertoire I rotate, the more pieces are sort of towards the front of the mental file cabinet, so to speak. So that uh, makes it easier to continue doing that. What advice would you give an undergraduate student who wants to have a successful career making a living as a professional violinist, performing and collaborating with others through music? 
Uh, and what are some of the career strategies and opportunities or goals that you might recommend? Well, I mean, that is, um, that's fantastic. You know, I think identifying that that's actually what you want is, uh, is a huge step, you know, because it is, uh, it's not an easy life, particularly not an easy uh, start to one's career. Um, I think th this is a, a topic that you know, one could talk about for days, but I think that really the most important thing is to determine what it is that you really think you have to offer, uh, whether that is a particular repertoire or a particular style or a particular way of presenting music, a particular way of communicating that message, a particular market. Um, and then really devote yourself to uh, to creating opportunities to share that. You know, I think that that sometimes people have this idea of things they're supposed to do and things they're supposed to want to do, and if you don't really put your best foot forward, sometimes that can end up taking a step back for you. I think you really need to focus on those projects that are most special to your heart, and remember that it is about communication. So. Uh, you better have something important to say. So find find the the stuff that means the most to you, and uh, then make those opportunities as best you can to uh, to share that. What are some of your organizational and or time management strategies and tips for efficient, focused, and healthy practice? Well, <laughs> I try to be efficient. I try to be focused. You know, I think that um, throughout my life there were. Music has always meant so much to me, and, and it's been it's been the greatest joy and to pursue this this job that I love so much. But there are a lot of other things in life that I love too, and uh, I think that taught me from a young age that if I was focused on a particular achievement, um, that that inspired me much more than focusing on a particular amount of time. You know, people would say you should practice for two hours. It's like well. But what if what I'm trying to accomplish in two hours, what if I could do that in an hour and a half? Then what? You know, then I could spend that extra half hour watching hockey playoffs or whatever it may be. So I think being goal oriented is is really important for maintaining focus. I think that um, having an understanding of what you need to achieve, what you want to achieve, and a timeline during which you want to achieve it. Uh, really helps organize your practice time and your life. So, I hope that those are uh, I hope that those are useful to those of you watching. And uh, once again, really looking forward to my performances with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, May 16 and 17 Mozart Violin Concerto Number Five. Hope to see you there. Thank you.